Uh, my name is Brian King and I'm a product development engineer. I have been at American Landmaster around 21 years. Well, I think the company culture is, is great and the people are great. Uh, it's a small company atmosphere, um, but I'm a product guy, so for me, you know, product is what kind of drives me and being in a small company, it's a great opportunity for an engineering and designer to be able to be at the ground level of something on a clean sheet all the way to the full, full product. There's been a lot of changes. One has in, been in product, you know, from transitioning from go-karts uh, and imported product to solely utility vehicle product and side-by-side. -side. So it's been a, been a big change in product in itself. Um, but I think most recently the biggest changes we've experienced here have been in process and in uh, production. Um, been a lot of investment in improving those processes uh, in being more efficient and more consistent and more quality minded. So, you know, Vanguard is a Briggs and Stratton product. It's their commercial extension of that. So they're very durable. Um, we use those in our products in more of a commercial application as well. But, you know, from an engine standpoint, uh, these types of engines are used and designed to go full throttle for you know a couple thousand hours pretty easily in some really rough environments like running equipment, pumps, uh, generators, welders. Um, so it kind of fits our wheelhouse pretty well for our product being in dirt, mud applications and in some you know environmentally demanding places. Yeah well Briggs and Stratton is the you know, overlying brand, that's what most people have heard of. Um, that's really more for their, what they would consider their homeowner type use, light duty use. So they have another line of product that they, you know, brand as Vanguard product, and that's what they really would put into commercial applications. So anywhere that's going to have a heavier demand, heavier duty cycles, uh, requirements for long life um, and serviceability, those would fall in the Vanguard category, and that's what we put in our vehicles. The L5 was introduced with the 16 horsepower Vanguard and we've had that engine for a lot of years and it's been a really nice compact engine that served us well. Um, this past year with the introduction of the L4 four wheel drive vehicle, um, it kind of put a closer distance between the L5 which was a great entry level vehicle um, and the L4. So we thought it was really a good time to look at giving the L5 more power. So by dropping in the new engine, we're jumping from a 16 to an 18 horse. Uh, the engines are very similar in their packaging and their look and how they install. Um, you're really just taking advantage of those two additional horsepower and additional torque that you'll see that really take that L5, I think really to a nice mid-range 4x4 product. By walking up to the vehicle, you're not going to be able to tell a huge difference. Um, in the packaging, it's the same. The exhaust system's the same. Uh, the look uh, and fit of the engine is very similar. The, uh, the new 18 horse is a little bit wider of a footprint of an engine, has a bigger bore. So I think the big thing you'll notice is when you press on the gas, you're going to notice the almost 18% increase in torque, um, probably about a 10 or 12 in, you know, increase in the horsepower. So you're going to feel it, the pedal and the performance when you drive the vehicle. Uh, it's just going to feel torquier and have a lot better power band. I think not a lot of new other than it's just going to be a more powerful power plant. It's going to have the same service parts. It's going to be a lot of commonality with what they're already familiar with. So from a service standpoint, you know, air filtration, oil filters, uh, all the typical maintenance that you do is going to be the same with this engine. It's still a carbureted engine. Um, it's just going to give that customer uh, more horsepower, which is what a lot of people like. So the Kohler engine served us well for the, the L7. A um, couple reasons to look at the Vanguard. One is that product commonality. Um, so going to Vanguard V-Twins, 
from the L5 up into the L7. Gives our service center some, some compatibility on those engines. Um, we've had a long history with the Vanguard engine. Um, it's been a solid performer for us with really pretty low warranty issues. So that was one reason to switch to the, uh, the L7 Vanguard in this 23 horse. So again, gaining a little bit more horsepower, commonizing that footprint. Um, the Vanguard offers really the most compact V-twin in that horsepower range that's really in the industry. So it's a nice small power dense package um, uh, with a nice EFI system that uh, we took quite a bit of effort in tuning for this application to really work well with the machine. So those are the big features. I think we also took a lot of time to tune this engine to work well on the vehicle and to meet the emissions that it needed to. We worked with SNS Cycle, who's a uh, aftermarket, big aftermarket um, manufacturer of exhaust products, um, and customization products for the motorcycle industry. Um, so we worked a lot with them and actually have one of their exhaust components on our vehicle. Um, that works well and, and just helped with a lot of the tuning. The Kohler was about a 20 and a half horse rated engine. The Vanguard is a 23 horsepower engine. Um, so you're seeing roughly maybe a 10% difference there. Uh, and about the same on the torque. So if you look at it from a curve to a curve, it doesn't necessarily look real substantial, um, but there is an increase and I think you really feel it in that mid-range acceleration. So kind of right off when you hit the gas and then that third of the way into the pedal, you'll really feel that torque difference there. Like I said, this is still a small block product with uh, the Vanguard. Um, so they do have a little bit smaller CC, but they also allow this engine to rev up higher than the Kohler does. So we're now going up to about 4,200 RPM at our top end, which translates to more speed, a little more power, um, so I would say it it's probably runs a little more efficiently than the Kohler does. Um, gives us a little bit better torque curve and a little bit more horsepower uh, than you saw on the Kohler. And I think you feel that mainly in the mid-range uh, is where most people will find the difference as well as that couple mile an hour at the top end. I think it feels more refined. That was a lot of the comments we got from our dealer event. Um, dealers that have experienced the Kohler version of the L7 as well as the Vanguard. When they got in the Vanguards, they noticed the, the power band felt better, felt torquier, felt like they were a little more confident with their power, um, as well as just a little quieter or better tone to that engine when it runs. Um, so just a more refined feel on the vehicle and then everybody likes having that extra couple mile an hour at the top end. So the main focus, you know, for 23 was some repowering of, of a couple of different platforms um, to the Vanguard engine and to that upsized L5 18 horse. Um, so quite a bit of resource and time was spent on that, but we did listen to the customer on some other things that uh, had come back over the past year and a half. Uh, one was pedal placement and the feel and the ergonomics of the pedal. So we do have a revised pedal design. Uh, on the 23 models um, that makes the, the comfort level a little bit better, especially when you're you know, on long runs with the, the gas pedal being depressed. Um, so a little better foot comfort, the pedals are extended a little bit, curved pads um, that make those feel better. Another area that we had had some complaints on was the seat bracketry. So you know, it's a very simple design for ours to get access to the engine and maintenance. You just can pull that engine up and flip it up on some hinges. Those hinge brackets were redesigned this year to uh, really eliminate or minimize as much as possible the side-to-side -side motion. So some of the tolerances that were there with that seat allowed for it to slide, you know, left to right, um, which made some people uneasy going around corners and things. So that was redesigned and tightened up so it has a, a firm fit on that. Um, we've done a few graphics things this year too, so we did some new branding graphics that you'll see that look really nice on the vehicles. We also added power steering as a standard option on the L5 and the L7. Uh, it was already standard on the crew models, but now we're, we're pushing that over to the standard cab. So power steering is one of those things that a lot of people look at and think, well, I don't really need it on a vehicle like this. But once you've been on a vehicle with power steering, it's one of those things where you don't really want to go back. So that's a nice value add. Mm -hmm.